Hey, what's up, guys? This is Perry with Premier Guitar here at the beautiful Ryman Auditorium in Nashville, Tennessee, with the man, Jason Isbell. Jason, hey everybody. how Perry, are you today, Good to man? see you again, Good sir. to see you again. Thanks, Thanks for, for joining us again. Yeah, this um, is fun. I like this. I like showing guitars to people. Yeah, you're, I, you're one of my favorite rundowns ever because you are a serious guitar dork. <laughs> I'm kind of nerdy about <laughs> yeah, it. You're yeah. really into it. I love I'm kinda, that. I'm, I'm not uh, as nerdy as some people, but I do. I, I continue. Like, I, I, I watch videos on different guitars pretty much all the time when I'm not, you know, chasing the toddler or actually playing a show. So <laughs> it's still, and, I, and it hasn't, like that, the feeling hasn't waned, the obsession. That's you a know, good thing. It's, it's as bad as it was when I was 15. Well, considering what you do for a living, I guess that's it's <laughs> good. pretty appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's good. You don't see a lot of uh, construction workers obsessing over hammers all day. So it's, <laughs> we're very lucky yeah. to have this job. Well, speaking of hammers and tools, yeah. you've got a bunch of new fun toys since the last time we yeah, talked. Yeah, it's been a couple of years it since has, we did this. So I'm trying to think of what I had that is in this rig. I, I had the 335. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, let's just do these first. This yeah. one is a 61. And I had it when we did the last rig rundown. Yep. That might be that. And then the uh, custom shop telly might be the only two guitars that I had then i think all these are are since oh, then well hell let's I talk think about so them. so yeah this one is uh just a, a a custom shop fender telly it's got a twisted telly pickup in the neck and then uh, just your standard telecaster pickup in the bridge and Great looking. i had them put a black pick guard on it because i like the way the black pick guard looks with the bound i was going to say it looks awesome with the bounding, oh, yeah, the binding, yeah i like that and uh yeah this is a really great guitar this is the one that I played um, at Willie's 4th of July picnic and everything went out. It was before Michael Bethencourt was working with me and uh, putting together my rig and my uh, pedal board went out. I, I didn't know what was wrong with it so I just plugged this guitar straight into the amp and I played the whole set and I didn't have to tune it and it was like an hour on the 4th of July in Austin, Texas at about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So that's what a Telecaster will do for you it will stay i know it, it was hot it was it, very hot and it didn't move and it didn't move you know at least not enough for me to notice and you know so i always appreciate the design of the telecaster because it just really works yeah. it really does the trick now this one i've had for a while this is a uh, april 65 so it's transition but i think the only thing that would be um, post sale would be the dots you know, it looks like you got like the pearloid dots there. They're not clay, I don't think, but the pick guard's still green. And then it's still got the good, the good sticker on it, you know? <laughs> um, but I think in 65, from what I can understand, there was a little bit more wood right here. It was a little thicker right there. And for some reason that seems to balance a little bit better than some of the earlier tellies from the same era. And this one's also got that really cool four coat um, candy apple red right so it's got in the bottom it's got that white primer and then it's got a gold powder and then a silver powder and then is that the to candy give it the apple. how they got the sparkle yeah i think they were just doing a lot of trial and error in those days and you know the candy apple red color over the years changes um from the early 60s to the mid 60s it's a different color almost entirely wow um, and a lot of them have like three coats and they won't have the uh silver you know they'll just have the gold and then the red huh. on top and they're a little bit darker but but yeah i think i think the 65 was the only year when they did all four and i've been looking for the matching strat but it seems to me and this could totally be wrong somebody at fender could probably tell us better but it seems to me that the strats transitioned a little quicker than the than the tellies did I wonder if so they were selling better or something. maybe so yeah so it's kind of hard to find a strat with this logo you know, and with a green guard that's not from 64, that's actually from 65. Most of the tellies you see from early 65, I mean, most of the strats from early 65 are, are white. Are white. And they haven't turned. Was that, I don't know, 65, was that actual plastic or was that Bakelite or what were they using for that? What was the name of that? It was, uh, it was not Bakelite, but a lot of people have mistaken it for Bakelite. Do you know what that was called, Michael? I'm not sure. That was Gibson, mm -hmm. yeah. A lot of people call it Bakelite, but it's not Bakelite. Some um, sort of proto-plastic. But yeah, some yeah. kind of weird plastic that they huh. had. I'm sure there's a bunch of people watching that know. Um, you can let us know in the comments. Please tell please. us in the comments. We read the comments <laughs> all the time. We love the comments. This is a 1960 
strat and it's oh. got that same green mm -hmm. guard going on and it's pretty this is a pretty clean guitar looks like somebody may have put a snark right here at some point uh, if you're watching and you have old fenders don't put a snark over the decal because the decal's on the outside of the finish and it will pull your letters off so if you're going to put a snark on put it somewhere where there's no letters and yeah this one's a pretty clean example um i play it a lot i really love it i started out playing strats when i was a kid so having a really good one is important to me but i think the frets are the only thing uh that's not All original stuff, on this yeah. guitar yeah. That neck profile looks pretty slim it is the... yeah it's not yeah. huge and you know it's it's a slab um and yeah i just i just love the way it sounds it's you know the old wiring so you don't have any kind of tone control on your bridge pickup you just have to roll the volume, volume down, down a little bit to kill the sting but it does everything a strat's supposed to do it stays in tune and it's remarkably clean super for clean yeah. yeah yeah super clean i got it at carter vintage guitars where i get a lot of stuff where i've gotten in much much trouble <laughs> but this one hadn't i don't think been played a whole lot when i bought it um and it took us a lot of work to get it exactly right. And I think when Michael figured out, um, and I believe Tom Stadler told us this trick, but tighten those two screws, and then these aren't really tightened to anything. You look at a lot of the new vintage style uh, fender bridges, they only have those two screws. Huh. These don't even exist. So I think part of getting the the tension. action and the tension yeah. right is if you hold it in with these and then loosen these guys up. That's a fun little trick. Yeah, and I didn't know it until we started messing with this guitar and tried to get it, you know, where you could do the Gilmore bands and uh, and that really helped a whole lot. But yeah, it used to be three color sunbursts and you know, that didn't last too long. <laughs> 60s and 61s, 59 to 61, I guess, kind of that third color fades out pretty quickly. I'm guessing this set in a case in the closet at some point. That's what I think. Yeah, yeah. Somebody's, somebody's granddad probably played that one on Friday night, you know. Um, <laughs> this guitar is great. This is one of my favorites. All right, so I've got a good question about this. Mm -hmm. A couple years ago, we did uh, Dave Cobb yeah. the rundown. Same he, one, probably. I think is that the is same it. guitar? Yeah, this is it. Yeah, because he, he even said that when he was doing the Nashville sound that you, you couldn't put that thing down. Yes, and, and it just I just really sort of fell in love with this guitar. It's a jet, right? And yeah, it's a it's a jet firebird, fifty nine jet firebird. And uh, it used to belong to uh, is it divided by thirteen? Is that the amp company that Peter Stroud is involved with? Might be. Is it 65, 65 amps. amps? Okay, so Peter Stroud's partner at 65 amps owned this guitar and then sold it to Dave Cobb. And then Dave told me at one point if my record sold a certain number of copies, he would give me this guitar because I don't think he thought that it would. Yeah, I think and he said then, a, a million copies. Yeah, I think he did, but I well, think we, we figured out, uh, I didn't sell a million copies, so maybe he factored in the streaming equivalent but sure. at some point he just gave me this guitar um, so cool. because he wanted me to keep using it and i mean it's beat up pretty well in all the right ways and it's a gretch so it's temperamental um, but when you get it to the right spot, nothing sounds like it. There's and so many oddball features like this. Oh yeah, roller bridge is so weird. The roller bridge is strange. The the filter tron thing, you know, with yeah. the with the filters, and you make a lot of weird noises with this. But it does that. Like the thing I like about these pickups is it almost sounds like you've got the guitar mic'd and the amp mic'd. And the attack, it's almost like you hear the pick hitting like the string almost? acoustically, huh. and you hear it coming through the amp. Um, and it just sounds different from anything else for jangly rock Must music. Be just the characteristic of that. Yeah, there's something about how they made those pickups. Right. And I think these are also, they were patent applied for for a long time. Oh, wow. So they were Gretsch's PAF yeah, yeah. pickups. But both of the pickups sound great. The middle position is magical. And I've played a couple of um, copies of this at the Gretsch Custom Shops playing now. Dave Cobb has one, and it's great. It's, mm. a, it's a really great guitar. Um, but yeah, I just, well, I love it. Good on you, Dave. That's you a cool, go, cool yeah, gift. <laughs> yeah, I know. Dave has given me a lot of nice things over the years. He's a good he's a good man, that Dave Cobb. And then this Les Paul was, for about a week, my coolest Les Paul. Um, <laughs> and uh, this is a 53, I believe. Uh, Larry Craig put the Bigsby on. Um, for this guy named Jason who uh, works at Fretboard Journal, he did a, 
a piece on Larry Craig and, and talked Larry into shaving down this ABR1 and putting a Bigsby on this guitar. And Larry did Old Black and Daniel Lanois' guitar oh, wow. and a couple other ones. Um, but these had the big like trapeze mm -hmm. tailpiece that made it really difficult to strum. You could you could play Merle Travis style, but if you're going to bang on it, you need something it's gonna different. Move and stuff yeah, it's, yeah, it's it's tough. So Larry put that on there, and uh, I bought it from T.R. Crandall's guitar shop um, right around Christmas, uh, this past Christmas, and I just love it. The neck is very comfortable, and the fretboard is like wide and flat, yeah. so you can go really really fast on this guitar. Love and that. of course, soap bars, you know, it doesn't matter where you put them, they sound fantastic because they've got this wide magnetic field. Right. And I play this one a lot. It's heavy, um, but it's worth it because it just, it, it's checked up beautiful. I it's love got some when green they start to check because you see the green through it. Yeah. I've heard that's an oxidization. Uh, I guess it is. Yeah, it probably is kind of rusting the powder inside that gold coat. Trip. But yeah, this guitar is a lot of fun to play. Are, are those pickups original to it? The pickups are. The pickup covers have been changed, but sure. the pickups themselves yeah, sure are the original. Yeah, original. disintegrated. Or yeah, whatever. after yeah. a while. Um, but I really like that guitar. And I got lucky because uh, Crandall put that up on their, on their Instagram, and I called immediately when I saw it. And they had just closed the shop up, and I happened to be the first person on the voicemail when they got there the next morning. And there were like 15 people who had left messages about that guitar. I just got on so there got first, the first call so back. I wound up getting it. Yeah. Rules. So I got really lucky. And then, of course, the 335, like I said, it's a 61, and uh, it's basically all original. I changed the bridge out and uh, the tuners. Everything else is original. I bought this one from Dave Cobb, who got it from Tom Bukovac, and this was uh, pretty much every great 335 in Nashville has Comes belonged to Tom yeah. at some point. but. Um, this is a really, really good one, and I thought that I would never uh, want a burst because I thought I wouldn't be able to find one that could beat this guitar. The middle position is just magic on this, and it does the thing with like, you know, a good fuzz pedal where you can put it in the neck and then roll the volume down a couple numbers, and it gets super sparkly, sparkly on top. Yeah. And it's just a really with a little 61 neck profile. It's got a small neck. Yeah, it does. You can really haul so ass cool. on that guitar. And, I know like uh, Warren Haynes' favorite 335 is a 61, and I think Bonamassa's is a 61. That's just a really yeah. good year for you know somebody who wants to go fast every once in a while on a hollow body guitar, yeah. it just works. Um, but then uh, I found this. Um, after having that one for a couple weeks, <laughs> this, this came into Ooh. my life and uh, oh. changed, changed everything about, being a guitar player. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is the Red Eye, uh, 1959 Les Paul. This was Ed King's, and it was his prized guitar in a really good collection. He he had a lot of great instruments. Yeah, and, no kidding. Uh, the Carters called me to come in and demo some of the guitars that Ed's widow Sharon brought in after Ed had passed, and and I came in and played the Sweet Home Alabama Strat and a couple of other things, and then I saw this on a stand, and I said, is that really the one, you know, is that the original? And they said, yeah, that's it. I was like, can I play it? And they said, well, that's why we put it out here. And I, and I felt myself being tricked. I was um, gonna say, do you think they knew ahead moment, of time you were gonna get your hands on yeah, that and I take thought, it home? I thought, uh, okay, I've been duped, but I know that, and I'm okay with it, and I still love these people. But I picked it up and, and I got lost on my way home that day and I couldn't sleep and I just couldn't stop thinking about this guitar. And uh, so I called my accountant and she said, no, that's ridiculous. Um, you can't, you can't that. have that guitar. So I called my manager and I told her I need you to find me a bunch of weird birthday parties to play this year. No, <laughs> no Qaddafis, you know, no, no terrible people. Just find me some, some crazy wild private gigs because I have to buy this guitar. And so I got this guitar and um, uh, we took the tuners off and we put some period correct new tuners because the old ones, believe it or not, were still functional and still worked great wow. and I didn't want either me or, or my tech, Michael, to break one of them off and right. have a terrible day. You know, it's like a Toyota Corolla in your hand. In your you hand, break one of the, yeah. yeah, and that old Bakelite and plastic and stuff is real. It doesn't real, hold up. Yeah. yeah, they turn into a dead man's Which, toenails real quick. This actually looks original. This is original. Wow. Um, 
And then this I switched out uh, because I like the top wrap and I didn't yeah. want to scratch it up. And then I think everything else is the way it originally wow. was. The frets have been changed up to uh, somewhere around here. I think Ed had them changed out partially, had a partial right. refret done, but everything else is what it's supposed to Man, be. This has got to be the lowest action I've ever seen on a Les Paul. Yeah, it's, it's, so, it's pretty low. So low. And uh, I'll tell you, it does everything I, I have ever wanted a humbucker guitar to do, yeah. you know? This it, does that thing, huh? The, the middle position on this is, is very, very special. Even for 1959 Les Pauls, it's a very special middle position. And the neck profile is perfect. You can see, you know, Ed's wedding ring. And uh, <laughs> there's a couple of little nicks and scratches, wow, but nothing major. Yeah, no real buckle rash. Yeah, um, very minimal. That's crazy. He took care of it. You know, Ed had it for a long time. It was stolen from him and Damn. famously returned to him over a decade later. And uh, so do they know how this discoloration came to be? Yes, that was originally, you know, the red all the way around. Right. And then this is where the tag was hanging oh. in the window. And That's so the trip. UV light uh, faded that aniline dye and took the red out of most of the 58 and 59 Les Pauls. <laughs> but in 60, they started going to the tomato soup color, which didn't fade that darker red. Right. Um, but even, in, I mean, the, 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 it's just so beautiful. It's man. clean. And That's I mean, look, look at the corners on the headstock, like they're, they're sharp. sharp. Yeah, <laughs> which is kind of unbelievable. It's pretty rare, yeah. Um, but yeah, the nut is original. You know, the selector is original. Um, somebody somewhere along the line carved a little bit out of the G-string to keep it from slipping, slipping. which I think still works great, yeah. you know. Um, but it's got a, a, a double white and a zebra. And then the zebra here, I think, is, is overwound um, maybe 600 turns, but also the magnet has weakened over time. Uh, right, so it they do lose. balances it out oh. in a way in that middle position that's just almost impossible to replicate. But Knopfler's 58 has a red dot here. His is not as pronounced. And then there are a couple more that have them too. Oh, but cool. that's where they hung the tag at the guitar store and put them in the window. What a trick. So yeah, this is uh, you know, as far as possessions go, that's my prized now, possession. Out of curiosity, are you trying to stay off of that guitar at night just to not? No, wear it out? no, no. I mean, it's uh, blown my mind. It's that made you it have 60 it with you. years, you know, yeah. and uh, I'm trying not to drop it. But <laughs> other than that, I'm going to use it. You, you know? got the old Kolsch. Um, yeah, so hopefully yeah. You don't have any that's trouble with that. That's still kind of the best, the best way to do that. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think it's supposed to be played, you know, and that was. Uh, one thing that I talked with, with Sharon about when I got the guitar was, you know, I'll take it out and play it and tell people it was Ed's and tell people how much you loved it and how magical it is and it won't go in a vault somewhere. Yeah, that's and, real uh, cool, man. You know, oh. it's in a vault, but, you know, yeah, not, yeah, yeah. A, not a bank vault. Right. Um, not some lawyer's uh, personal yeah, collection or something. Yeah, yeah, which is cool. I'm glad those guys like sure. guitars too. But I think something like this, you know, it looks nice, but when you hear it, in a room like the rhyme and it, it really Nothing changes like it. it changes yeah. something how cool um, yeah so that's i mean i've got awards and stuff and i don't go look at those every day but that i look at go, every yeah. day i what don't a, have to ask permission it's such to a, play an it. accomplishment to own right it I mean, is that's be you, like a, one no of those. kidding like you feel like other than just like having a family and taking care of them that's about as good a career accomplishment as you can have as a guitar player to have an instrument like that because it's like i'm never going to outgrow that i'm never going to get to the point where that is normal to me like to have that a guitar. violin it is a fiddle player. yeah, yeah it's crazy. that kind of thing and uh, there aren't you know they don't make any more of them i mean they do but not real ones yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. what do they say there were there were you know like 623 made and there's only a couple thousand left because <laughs> people have faked them over the years but that's, that's the real thing now this is pretty interesting gibson made me uh, a clone and, oh wow yeah and they let me pick out the top and and the neck and the back and everything and it looks they even got on. like the ding right here yeah. you know um and it's lighter this one's only about I think that one's close to nine pounds and this one's right around eight. eight. Uh, so it's it's lighter, but it sounds great. Um, they're making pickups without wax on them over there now, which makes me super happy. Uh -huh. Matt Kohler at the at the custom shop just really did a fantastic job on this guitar. I mean, um, if you if you were to AB the two of them, would you notice immediately? 
Um, I would, you would but of course, yeah. I don't know if anybody yeah. else would. That's cool. You know, and that, they're doing great. That's they're only because I know great. it's not a difference in quality of the sound necessarily. It's just, you know, There's this total this yeah. bridge doesn't bite quite as hard as that one does. That's preference, you know. Right. And this neck is not quite as hot as that one is. That's preference too. Right. So it's. I wouldn't say one sounds better or worse. I mean, there's certainly more difference in the price than there is in the tone. Sure. That's that's a big one, you yeah. know. That's, yeah, oh yeah. That's understatement. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> yeah, and I would be perfectly happy playing this guitar yeah. every night. I mean, there's nothing wrong with this instrument. And, and they have a laser scanner and they scan the neck profile. Um, so this it's is it's identical. Wow. Yeah, it's, it took them six or eight hours and it's the exact same neck. Which is really kind of what matters. I mean, everything else you can fix, but yeah. Gibsons aren't quite as modular as Fenders. You can't sure. just find a better neck and put it on well, and yeah. expect it to work. But yeah, they did a great job. So I use this one a lot. Yeah, too. good on you, Gibson. Yeah. That it looks great. Yeah, it's a great guitar. And then, uh, so these guitars here are my Martin signature model. This one was a prototype that they sent me. And it's almost identical to the one that went into production. Um, D18? It's a D18, yeah, and we just wanted it to be as loud as possible. That was kind of the goal. And, and you know, growing up with, with my granddad and his brothers, they all played big dreadnought guitars, and whoever had the loudest won. Had the best, best yeah. sounding. Yeah, and yeah. it kind of is a litmus test for that. As long as it's loud everywhere and you don't have dead spots, you know. And they did really good. It's lightweight. Um, the pick guard comes in the case, so you can put it on the guitar or, or not. leave it off. Oh wow, that's and, cool! Yeah, they figured out. Uh, Fred Green at Martin ran some tests and said that the pick guard can take five decibels off of the volume wow. of a dreadnought guitar, which is more than I would have expected. That's a lot more than I would have expected. It's a lot. I mean, it's not a ton, but, but at the same still, time, it's, five it's, decibels it's is stopping a lot. that wood from moving. Right. Yeah. That's it. It's just it's just cutting vibrations, and they use high glue and uh, old school. Yeah, old school. I love that the only inlay is your logo. Yeah, I think that right? is so slick. Well, you know, you don't need, to me, you don't need them on the front, you need them on the top. top. And so yeah, I yeah. made those extra big. Oh, they are big. So nice. you can see them in a low light on a stage. Um, but yeah, we, and we put the tattoo right here at the 12th and then use the old pyramid bridge, mm -hmm. which doesn't take up a whole lot of space. You know, so it doesn't cut down on vibration. Now that you've mentioned the, the difference in the pit guard, I wonder what this really slim profile. I think it adds. Be. I think it adds some volume. I don't <laughs> know how much, but it's for a new guitar. It's extremely loud. And then this one is almost identical. This is the production model, so it's almost the same. Yeah, there's hardly a variation. Yeah, there. yeah, there's not much difference at all. Um, it's got a matte. Yeah, it's got mm, a matte yeah. finish, and then. Uh, the pick guard obviously is not on this one, um, so this one is a little bit louder. So you can, cool! You can tell the difference in the volume of them. Um, yeah, and I I love playing those. They're consistent. Uh, we use the Fishman Aura Spectrum to uh, no, it, we got the Matrix Infinity pickups in both of them, and then we use the Aura right. for, our, the for our front of house. Yeah, and we took them up to Boston and had them do models of these particular guitars. So, you know, basically I'm triggering. Uh, uh, my own a recording of my own guitar, and then blending that in with the with the under saddle pickup. Oh, that's so, so cool! Yeah, and that that works great for cutting through a band. You know, if we're having feedback issues, if I'm somewhere where the line array is is you know right close to where I'm standing on stage, I can put a feedback that buster, buster and sure. it still sounds like an acoustic guitar, which is pretty remarkable. Right, um, hard to do. Hard to it is hard. Uh, and then this guy is the weird, this is the strange bird. Oh, is this the uh, This is the Dobracho? Dobracho. Yeah. <laughs> Castle Creek Guitars yeah. in Colorado. And uh, How cool is that? It's really neat. It's you so know? weird because it's got like resonator features, but also kind of mandolin-y in a weird it way. It is, like, yeah. Yeah, it kind of looks like an F series mandolin. Yeah, like with, the, with, with this kind of way here. Scoop. I mean, that's but a it's cool. Got, it's got a Bigsby and then it's got also like... <laughs> and you can weird. tune that bender in. Um, now, I'm not qualified to do much of that. I use the Bigsby a little, but I don't do the Bender yeah. stuff. You play mostly guitar. slide on this guy, right? No, I actually, okay. I play, uh, if we were vampires, vampires on it, and I do it uh, tuned down a whole step, and this one sounds good and holds that tuning real well, and then we run this one through the Fishman That's also, cool. uh, one of the Jerry Douglas presets on the Fishman. Uh, not, not bad. <laughs> yeah, not bad at all. That dude and, knows what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, he definitely knows how a resonator is supposed to sound. For sure. Um, 
But yeah, this is a really cool guitar, and I've got another one that he made before he made this one that's a metal body, but obviously this one's a little lighter and a little bit easier Probably to Probably a little warmer, with. too. Yeah, tinny. it sounds a little bit warmer in the front of the house. And, and, uh, cool. Yeah, it's a cool guitar. And then this guy over here, um, Tom Stadler. Oh, your cooter cast. Yes, yeah. Tom Stadler built this. I think I had this one. That guy's a real ready. talent. I had he the is pleasure very of gifted. Him recently, and he was he was so cool. He's a super nice guy, and he knows how to build guitars. And you know, he made this one so it would check, and so it would kind of get gnarly. So it's got without, nitro finish. I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah, and it's starting to get there. It's starting to turn a little bit. You know, if I if I did all the bad habits that I used to do, it would be yellow by now. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it's got this is a an original gold foil out of an old like Tiesco. Yeah. And then this is the Lawler Supro pickup. Gotcha. Um, and yeah, it just, it works. I put flats, Blake Mills told me to put flats on it. So I put, put flat wounds on it and uh, it's great for playing slide and it also makes some really interesting things happen when you're not playing Play slide. slide. Hmm. You, know, you make some really good decisions. It's kind of like having a Strat in the early 60s when everything had flat wounds on yeah. it, you know? Huh. I think um, the, the last time we talked, you said you can actually swip, swap that pickup around and get it out of phase. Kind yes, of sound. totally. And you had you have to put a cap to make it to make the middle position work. So he put a cap on it to make it. You know, before if you had it in the middle position, you could only hear half, half. of this pickup working. So yeah, I'm sure that's a very interesting tone because those are two it pretty is. odd ball pickups. Yeah, they're really yeah. weird together, um, and they sound real different. But I just I love hearing a really good guitar player play on something that sounds busted. Yeah. You know, like the whole Ry Cooter thing. It totally. just, it's just so much fun to hear somebody who knows what they're doing play on an instrument that sounds like it's about to fall apart. <laughs> and uh, this is actually a really well-built machine, but it sounds like it sounds like an explosion, you know? And then <laughs> if you use it with a lot of compression, which I do sometimes, um, it just takes over. I mean, it, it, it's huge, you know? and, and with like we use the origin effects um, slide, slide rig mm, yeah. and you know it's like two 1176s basically in sequence and oh, so cool. it just it just blasts even with a clean tone you can now, do that. Does this thing get away from you because I know that uh, steel lap steel pickups or uh, pedal steel pickups are pretty uh, oh, yeah. microphonic. You, you can't touch stop sensitive. playing it. <laughs> you gotta <laughs> just hand just keep moving. playing. No no rests on this guitar. Also um, I think it's super slick that he did the headstock the same as the Yeah, doesn't that look good? It's just cool. Man, uh, that looks really cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's classy. I don't know why more guitar builders don't go with that old like sixties yeah. Italian fake tortoise vibe. Almost looks like some sort of weird Buddy Miller. It kind does of kinda, thing. yeah. 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 That's awesome. Um, and it, it'll get out from under you, but that's part of the beauty of it, yeah. you know? I mean, the, these old PAFs will do it too. If you listen to uh, the High Women did a version of the Chain Fleetwood Mac uh -huh. song for a movie, and I played that burst on the outro solo, and I played it through a 100 watt Marshall uh, that's Dave Cobbs, like a late 60s you know, Marshall stack, and I just dimed everything. And I went in the other day, and this cracked me up. I went in the studio, and somebody had marked it that day. They had marked the settings on the amp, and so they just had a, a line drawn at every 10 on the whole amp because I just turned every knob all the way to the right. So they had it marked, and everything was wide open. I was uh, like, you really didn't have to mark, mark this. It, you could yeah. have just turned all the knobs to the right. But I was standing in the room with it, so you can hear when that solo starts at the end of the High Women version of the chain, you can hear the pickups go whoop. You can just hear them like, <laughs> no <laughs> that's way. the greatest sound. Man. That's, that's so the, cool. That's the most rock and roll sound I know of is when a, when a PAF like squeals at you for a second right before Weird you start honk. playing it. Yeah. 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 Um, but what anyway, there's the guitars. Well, heck yeah, man. Uh, I think you have some changes to your amp set up too. You want to go I take have. a look? Yeah, let's take a look at the amps. Right. Oh, you know what? Before I let you go, before I forget, okay. I would be remiss if I didn't ask about strings and gauges. Oh, of course. Yes. Uh, here are the strings, the Ernie Ball Slinky 10s I've used since I was probably nine years old. I've just used those same strings on every electric She's guitar. Too. Totally get it. They stay in tune. I don't have very acidic hands and, you know, they work. And I know what they're going to sound like when I put a new set on. And then we use uh, Dunlop picks and uh, we've also got a Dunlop buffer, like an MXR Dunlop buffer cool, yeah. um, under the uh, board on the switcher. Um, and yeah, I think that's that's about that. Um, All right. Are you a, a, a metal slide guy? Or 
Yeah, I've been using um, mag slides, which is like oh, a yeah. magnesium thing. They're cool. It almost looks like a mood ring or something. Yeah, like well, it. they do have some different ones. The one yeah. I have just you, looks They're like a drill bit slide. Super though. It light. It looks like a big heavy chrome, yeah. but it's really, really light. Like a big old socket almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I use the Dunlop glass slides also. I use the same like 213 or 214 yeah. for years and years. And I just recently started using that mag slide, and it, it's great. I can stop, you know, really quickly and get yeah. around real fast. I was going to say, those things look so so smooth. It's got to be different than a, you know, like a Coruscant or something like that because it's not so chonky. It yeah, just, it's you, you just have slick. to be you have to be patient with it. You know, you spend some to, time with it. Huh? Yeah, you have to really like be. You have to play with intention and awareness. <laughs> if I was drunk, I could not use a slide that light. It's a, ah. it's a sober man's slide. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I like it because it sounds like a heavy slide, but it's not. But and it's that's the light, hard yeah. thing to pull off because a super thin glass slide sounds super thin to me. Yeah. But this one actually sounds like a, a, a heavy one. All right, Jason, hell yeah. Thanks, That's, Perry. You've got a whole lot of cool guitars. I know, I know. With. Who would have thought, man, I would have wound up with all these cool guitars. It's so much fun. All right, let's talk about cool amps. Let's talk about cool amps. All right. All right, y'all, now we're over here in amp land. And if you remember from the last Jason Isbell rig rundown, this is old Michael back and forth. He <laughs> is doing a ton of work. This guy's got a lot of stuff on his plate every night. And he's going to help us with uh, some of the details of these amplifiers. Yeah, Michael here. knows more about this stuff than I do. Um, <laughs> but yeah, what we've got here is on the bottom row, we've got the uh, panoramic stereo magnetone. So I got two 12s in there or two 10s? Two 10s. Two tens. Tens, and those are the original magnetone speakers. And they have that really cool and circuit that's like the vibe. It's awesome, yeah. yeah. They're, they're, what is they're, it called? The, the, the pitch shifting vibrato. Pitch shifting yeah, vibrato. vibrato, yeah, that's and, too and cool. So we put a mic on each each side so I can hear, and it's crazy in my in ears. Yeah, does I it make you dizzy ever? Like yeah, we've got the little controller out there and like I can hear it going from one side to the other in the ears so they can manipulate that in the house and make it sound fun. But those things are great. They're really loud and they're well made and you know, they just sound like you would want an amp that size to sound. Um, then the deluxe is the hand wired deluxe reissue and we put a Weber Ferromax speaker. Ferromax, yeah. yeah, Weber Ferromax speaker. And we use Weber attenuators with these sure. also. So you can um, get some balls out of it and not yeah, kill yourself. Yeah. I hate plexiglass. I hate how it sounds. Yeah. It always sounds like out of phase and you're getting that slap back coming off of the plexi. Well, so throws sound all it. over the damn place, you know. Yeah. yeah. And if you're in a room like the Ryman, you know, if you're too loud, you you're gonna ruin yeah. the mix of the show. Because this this room sounds, you know, you could just stand here with an acoustic guitar and play and sing and it would sound yeah. great out in the house. So you don't want to you don't want to overpower stuff. Um, but those two I normally use together and then these two I use together. Interesting. And okay. yeah, and so the top two, it's a 64 Vibroverb and a 58 Bassman. And the Vibroverb has had the Diaz mod done where the, the vibrato is disconnected. And uh, so it breaks up a little quicker, you know, oh, gives okay. you a little bit more warmth uh, at a lower volume. Because um, it's not pulling any juice to the... Yeah, yeah okay, not to that, that other sense. tube, yeah. Um, my wife Amanda got me that Vibroverb for Christmas a few years ago. That, you and, know what, uh, her, her love language must be gift giving because yeah, she gives you the good. coolest stuff. All, I think all languages are her love language. She doesn't <laughs> have a non-love language. That's um, so cool. But yeah, and she, she gave me a, a Scrabble pieces that had the word vibroverb and so I had to spell out the word in the Scrabble tiles before she would give me Were the there any other words that you can spell with those letters? <laughs> I mean I was trying to do reverb I was like what did you get me a reverb tank or, like I couldn't fit it would took me a long time because that's the only place the word vibroverb exists right in nature is on that amplifier. Is that on, on that amplifier? Yeah so it took me a while but um that's got the 115 and it's uh the JBL, it's right? The JBL, That's the yeah. JBL, because some of them had Jensen's, mm -hmm. and I've got a, uh, I've got a pro from the same year, at home that has the Jensen yeah. in it, and P15P, uh, I think it is. Okay, but that's the JBL, and then that basement is 58. I recently got that from Rudy's. Michael found it at Rudy's in New York, and. Uh, called me about it and then I went in and played it not realizing it was the same amp he had called me about and I called him about it and he was <laughs> like that's the same basement. That's a sign. Yeah that was a sign so so I wound up getting that Is one. Is that I four tens? Four tens. Cool. Um, you can jump the channels uh, and I think it belonged to George Alessandro, or at least was in his shop for a while. So yeah, the, work the work is all his. For a good dozen years or so. Yeah, so it just it sounds it sounds amazing. And 
The combination of the 115 and the 410 covers a whole, a whole lot, lot of sonic of, territory. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean that when I got those two amps together, it was really kind of the moment where that thing that, that I've looked for since I was nine or ten, well, you know, how the guitar is supposed to sound just happened all right. of a sudden. It's like, oh. there, there it is. That's what I've been looking so, for. So, dumb question for you. Are you breaking this up by like rhythm slide or like rhythm and lead? Or Not really. It just depends on the song. It just depends. Yeah, it just depends. Like, um, you know, we've been covering uh, Brothers in Arms, the Dire Straits yeah. song, and that's neck pickup on a burst with no pick, just with fingers. fingers. Oh. So what you need is something that's got a lot of top end, you know, so I've been using these guys because it gets that kind of sparkle, yeah. you know, those two together. Um, but then if you've got a guitar that has a lot of top end and you want something meaty and, and sort of Thick warm, then those two work every time, you For know. Sure. I, think, I think the mid-range coming from that bassman just really does something with the 115 that makes it perfect you know to me anyway. I love that man if there's yeah. if there's a combination of two amps that sound better than those two then it's above my pay grade and I'm not going to know the difference you know um, yeah th those make me really really happy and I love how the basement's just beat to hell man that thing looks like it's been it's, to hell and it's back. been played and that's how a basement should look you know I like that tweed when it's just coming all to pieces I also love your old school like Mars music yeah like, oh, the <laughs> amp, pyramid, yeah. amp pyramid it does look here. like that yeah, yeah. That's too but, cool. Yeah, it works. And uh, and then just while we're here, uh, these are like little ISO right, boxes right. or something. Yeah, for your, right, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. So it just blocks any kind of external Yeah, noise. the mics are on the inside. It just blocks. And, you know, because we've got, we try to keep stage volume low just because we're all on ears. And, sure. You know, I want him to have as much control right. in the bird's nest as he can. So are you running every amp on its own Weber attenuator? Or do, yeah, they oh, each okay. have their own attenuator. Um, the magnetone has two, as it's a, it's two got sides. two power amps. Because it's a stereo amp. Yeah. Ah, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, Way it's pretty cool. much two amps stuck together, that magnetone. Yeah. Well, sure did sound good in sound check. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, I'm very lucky to have these, you know, finally kind of got everything together. And I'm sure in a few years I'll be finding other amps that I want to switch in and out. But you might not want to take that I old basement on the I doubt that those two are ever going to go anywhere. And the magnetone does something that no other amp really does, you know. It just, it, the, the quality of the sound combined with that stereo vibrato circuit is, yeah. you know, it's just It, it's it really cool. does a thing, yeah. It's the only amp cool. I've ever heard do anything similar is that, I think, uh, Buddy plays as a Swart amps, yeah, and they Swartz. have some sort of weird, yeah, it's they a do different have kind a of circuit, vibrato. but it like, whoo, it'll make you feel some kind of way yeah. when you're listening to it. Yeah, yeah. and I, I, I like that, you know. I like yeah. that a lot. Love it. Um, All right, and then on to pedals. pedals. All right, y'all, the last time we talked pedals, you had a bunch of rack stuff that you're controlling with the J RJM Mastermind. Oh, thanks for the cool little shout out, by the way. We had oh, a. Oh, did you I see didn't that? Even, you know what? I edited he the did whole. did that. I didn't know that it was, was there so either. cool. <laughs> I edited that whole thing and didn't even pick up on that until one of the fans in the comments was like, "Oh man, did you all check this out?" Because it was only in like one little spot. Yeah, yeah. Easter egg. Easter egg. Little Easter right. egg. Love that. Like well, you had a games. lot less MIDI stuff going on. Yeah, three three MIDI components in the first run. Um, and I think we're at 14 MIDI devices <laughs> well, now. Um, and you know, we're not using every right, bit right. of MIDI all the time, cool. but a lot of functionality that's, uh, that's been tapped and has yet to be tapped. Sure. All right, well, let's just start from the top and work our way down there. Where you, you got the, what is that, the Aura? Yeah, these are the Fishman Auras. Um, we've got three of those, one for the Dobrado, and one for each of the Guitar. D18s. Sure. Um, and then a blue note. The blue note I use sometimes a little bit as an EQ um, if I want to make like a neck humbucker a little bit more trebly. I'll, oh. I'll do that. And then also just as a little bit of a gain stage. A little bit of a um, yeah. Yeah, I like that pedal. Uh, uh, it's J Rocket. Yeah, J Rocket yeah. Audio. They make some really cool stuff. They make cool stuff, and I've had that a long time, and, and you know, it does that tube screamer thing real well. Um, and then here we have super fun. This is the super fun oh, tray. Baby. So that's the slide rig, origin that's effects. One. That's a big one. They make a small one. They make a little one now, one now right? Yeah, 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 but this was their original design. And uh, yeah, it's like two studio compressors in sequence. Like so having outboard gear right in your rig. It rig. is. That's yeah. so cool. And you can get the Lowell George clean slide sound, but super, super squashed. So yeah. you get all the sustain that you want. Um, and then this. Analog Man Sun Lion is the fuzz face and the Beano Boost 
in together one in cool. one pedal. And I think that might be the first one of those that he made. I think we sent it back to him to get some work done. And he was like, this is the first one I sent out. Yeah. And I got that from Mark Ford years ago. We were on tour when I was in the drive-by truckers. We were out with the Black Crows and Mark gave me that pedal. Killer. And so it's it's faded. You know, you can't even really see the, the sticker anymore, but it sounds so good. So are you using both sides of that? Yeah. Cool. Both, both sides. Um, and King of Tone also from Analog Band. And then this compressor, I had him put a fourth knob, a mix knob on his oh, three cool. knob compressor. Good and, mod. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it, you know, it works great. That's the one that's like not really an effect, you know, that's more of a condition Just and a, compression, mm -hmm. kind of to take the single coils up to where they yeah, need to be. Almost an EQ kind of thing in a way. Yeah, now. really. Um, of course you got that. Yeah, that's Klein beautiful. Centaur. Is that the same, you've had that same that's one? That's the same one. And that's definitely the pedal that I use the most. You know, because it just it just does its thing better than right. anything else. You know, well, because I'm uh, <laughs> believe it or not, this is <laughs> the highest paid gig in the world. I love my job more than anything, but I've never gotten to AB the KTR or the or the gold face or the or the silver face. Yeah. Do you notice this whole difference in those? I can't tell the difference between the gold and the silver. Okay. I can tell the difference between the KTR. You can. And the other two. Yeah. Well, that makes sense as a PC board and not. Yeah, like the, I can yeah. tell a little bit of a difference. And you know, this is the kind of pedal that's not. I look at it like it's three to five percent better than all of the really good versions of it. It's not it's not a whole world of difference. There's barely any difference, but there's enough to where if that's the sound you want, that's the only way I've figured out right. to get it. Um, I mean, so many people make Klon clones. Yeah. That are close. Yeah, that are very, very close. And, you know, you can use other things to make it get that extra five percent probably but if you want yeah. one pedal that does that particular and we use it low gain you know kick the treble and the output up and don't a, don't put a whole lot of gain in yeah. there just just to basically condition the sound sure. um, a little bit of a boost and it just sort of expands everything um, and then down here we have a Electro harmonics micro pog back Always here. Always a fun pedal. Yeah, you have to have one of yeah. those if you're going to play guitar nowadays. You have to have a pog because you you can't you can't play guitar unless you have at least one song that has a pog on it. It's a law. It's a law now. If you're I've heard they, they passed that. Nashville actually passed yes, that. Yes, it's called the yeah. Jack White Law. You mm -hmm. have to have a pog. Um, I do like it though. It's a really They're cool fun, pedal. Man. Yeah, H9, which I think lately the only thing I've been using the H9 for is the cocked. Clyde wah, like we, we found a setting on there that sounded like a picture wah, uh, cocked, right. and uh, you know, like the money for nothing totally. tone, and that's really all I've got, but it's obviously got an infinite array of sounds. You almost need a, like a full education on those things. Yeah, you to, need yeah, like yeah. six months to figure yeah. out everything that that'll do. Wow. And then the Analog Man uh, delay, I use this one for like a slap back delay, and then I use the uh, tonal recall. Uh, Chase Bliss for a longer Washy. delay and then yeah. I've got a controller over there where I can hit that and, and make the tails continue so I can kind of do some crazy stuff with yeah. that um, and then what all do we have here we got the Dark World Reverb Which and that's then, a super cool pedal that's a really and like the Chase Bliss stuff is it's rad. I, I think it's unique. You know what I love about it? All those little, you can really sculpt your tone with those. Yeah. Almost infinitely, almost like a H9 where anybody could buy a pedal and get that tone. But with, yeah. with his pedals, you can really You can do a lot tweak it of out. stuff. Yeah. I mean, they've got all these little switches back here on the back. I mean, I think and we're dorks and no offense, Joel, you're one of my favorite people, but man, he's but into some dorky, dorky, dorky stuff. Yeah, and, and I'm glad that he's there a are genius. people like him out there after yeah. doing that so we can find the weird little sounds that totally. inspire us, you know. Um, but yeah, then we've got the Condor and the Gravitas Tremolo, which that one too, I don't even really know how to operate the Tremolo as well as I should at this point because right. it does so many different things. Um, well, dang. Other than your controller, which is what you've got, you're running that RJM People Mastermind. are going to ask about this, Mike. Oh, I was going to I was going to leave that yeah. till the end because we, we had a we conversation. Hit it. We were, we were going to hide it so people didn't buy those. Yeah. This one's Michael's pedal. Um, it's a little secret sauce. It huh? is a secret. It's a, it's, it's a, DML. 10 Ibanez, Ibanez modulation and delay and uh, we're not really using it for its intended purpose would you say no no there's I mean there's no audible delay to it uh, yeah kind of turn it the delay all the way down a, yeah it's it with that pedal you can go down to 0.9 milliseconds so it's you can't hear so it. just do no, like a weird uh, well it kind of it we've basically using it as a comb filter oh wow um, yeah. and then when you add a little bit of modulation um, very, very slow and very, very narrow. Um, I mean, the closest thing is a flanger. 
uh, but we're using it in a really transparent like an Im way. Impossibly it low. Kind of, yeah. It just kind of flange. adds a little bit of a breath to what's going on. It just expands things a little bit. You know? It's funny those pedals that you know I bought when I was a kid. And I'm like, I don't like this. You know, threw it away. Yeah. Shouldn't have done that. Go back and find one good use for all. Good those pedals. luck. Yeah. yeah. I mean, a lot of the great you know instruments are accidents, like. You know, Wurlitzer was supposed to sound like a grand piano. Like, that's what they were shooting for. And they missed severely that's and made something cool. Awesome. So yeah, even your old pieces of crap, not saying that's what that no, is, no. but if you have something laying around that you don't like at all, Keep, you know, hold wait and then go back and mess with it yeah. again because you might find something accidental in there that you like. Yeah, that's the, what are the chances? That's funny. It's yeah. almost like seeing a metal zone pedal on some right. chicken picker's board or <laughs> yeah, something like exactly. that. Like, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's a trip. And uh, I, I know they're about to open doors, so we don't have a whole lot of time. Okay. We're still running that RJM, yep. which just Michael. helps you. Yep, yeah, all RJM stuff. Yeah. Um, similar setup to last time. They've uh, added some features in their controllers, oh. with, like little hidden functions, hold functions in the buttons that we use. Cool. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot going on there. Yeah, nothing. Yeah. To, some really powerful technology and really handy is. too when you got a lot all this going on. I mean, as somebody who's singing and playing. A lot of guitar at the same time, it, it changed my world to yeah. just be able to hit one button. Shit, and I get... can barely walk and talk at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Do yeah, I was doing this all night yeah. before we got that RGA, RJM set up and Michael put it all together. Now I can hit a button and it makes a sound. And yeah. then I go to the solo, I hit another button and it makes that sound. So it's, it's great. Love really it. Really good. Well, y'all, thanks so much for Perry, taking the thank you. Hey, man, Appreciate it's always a pleasure. Thanks it's always coming. a fun rundown with you. We're going to get the rest of the guys in the band Good. real quick and get out of your hair. All right. Have All a right. great night. Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right. Now, here we are stage, right, with a man with the coolest name in show business, Sadler Vaden, the peanut butter filled pretzel guy. This is a uh, rhyme and tradition. It's essential to a uh, good tone. And, I, and You know, I've heard some old wives tales about peanut butter pretzels. Uh, Getting a little oil on your fingers and making yeah. it. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, oh <laughs> yeah. You play yeah. right. Yeah, it's probably, that's probably true. There's a yeah. ton of tonality. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's just, you know, you get some good rock moves, you know, Love after that. you eat some of these, so, yeah. Heck yeah, well, um, since Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for being here. Yeah. Since the last time we talked, um, I think in 2015, so it's been a while, you got some, yeah. you got some new fun toys. I got some, I got some new friends. Let's, let's take a, a look. Let's take a let's gander at what you got going on. Down here. Um, <laughs> let's, uh, okay, let's start here. This is my, uh, Ooh. Uh, custom shop telly that uh, Fender built uh, for me uh, last year, and um, oh, butterscotch, it's, babe. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's a it's a killer guitar. I based it off of a uh, '51 Nocaster, and uh, I went with like the uh, '60s style neck, and it's got a, a 9.25 fretboard radius. So, How cool is that? Just yeah. to pick everything. I know it was it was pretty fun. Oh man. Yeah, I demoed some amps for them uh, last year, and you know they let me. They were kind enough to let me build a guitar, and, and so not a bad payment. Yeah, and so uh, cool. yeah, man, these are Twisted Telly pickups. They sound great. Um, Jason uh, recommended those, and uh, I'm happy with it. Got a medium relic job on yeah, it. They did a killer which job. That's cool. Their yeah, custom looks shop awesome. already kills. It, always yeah. kills it. Yeah, and the checking is just right and everything. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Yeah, they really Love did that. a good job. Yeah, and the fretboard looks really good too. Yeah, this guitar rocks. So it rules. Yeah. What are you? What's on? What kind of songs are you playing that on? Um, so I play this on uh, "Hope the High Road," and uh, I'm trying to think of what other songs. Sometimes "Alabama Pines." Cool. Um, oh, uh, "Anxiety." Play it on that. Um, yeah, I got medium jumbo frets on it, which I like. Really gives you something to grab a hold of. Like. Yeah. You know, you're just not going to miss the chord with those frets. So, yeah, love this guitar. It's a great guitar. Very pretty guitar. Yeah, and uh, this next guitar here, I went into the B-Bender territory. Oh, a little too high. Huh? Yeah, this is, uh, I believe it's an 81. I got it Carter Vintage. It's a Tokai breezy sound. Breezy sound. Yeah, and uh, it's got the uh, Parsons string bender. Cool. So that's legit right there. Yeah, those are super And uh, I got a Moody strap on here, really which nice I thought strap. was, was yeah. a nice touch to this guitar. Made in Japan. And uh, it's got a good neck. Pickups sound good. I don't know what the pickups are. I think they're stock, but yeah. they sound good. Man, the Japanese put a lot of attention and time yeah. in guitars. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I was, I'm, you know, happy with this guitar. I love the contour um, on the back of the neck. It's so it's yeah. just a little bit different. You know. Like, yeah, yeah. And I, I've been starting to do some cool, like non-countryish, you know, stuff 
uh, with the bender, like octave bends and uh, more like blues pentatonic, Jimmy Page Some style Zeppelin stuff. stuff. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, awesome guitar. That one's rad. Um, let's go into... Oh, we got all kinds of tellies here today. Yeah, yeah, we'll start with the tellies. All right, yeah. Um, this, this one uh, made an appearance on the last Ray Run Down. Yeah, and uh, just, you know, Tele Custom. I think it was made in Mexico. Um, got Fralin pickups. This is a wide range. This is a split rail. The wide range just is a nice beefy pickup. It's somewhere um, in between a bucker and a single core, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I keep this one in open G for the most part and um, uh, play some slide on it. And uh, it's just a rock and roll machine. Just sounds great. It's cool looking too. I love yeah. that black on black pickup. These split rails are, are a little hot, but I like it. Like it's it's um, get pretty spanky on it. Um, so yeah, this yeah. is a great guitar. It's beautiful. Had it for a while. It's nice. I think Original that... fuzz strap on this one. Oh yeah, look yeah. at that. <laughs> yeah, a little shout out to those guys. Um, now this is your go-to number one. Yeah, this is my this is my baby girl right here. Yeah, oh, that's a great guitar. Yeah, this, I don't know, man, this guitar just is like an extension of me. Um, it just feels, I just feel at home when I'm playing this guitar. Was, was an yeah. SG, uh, you know, one of the first good guitars you ever got? Or? Uh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I would say that, yeah. And uh, it wasn't this SG, but I've always liked SGs. Um, you know, I'm a big Pete Townsend fan, Zappa fan. Like, I don't know, I just always kind of was drawn to the SG. And I think they are pretty versatile for, for, um, you know, to be a Gibson, like I think the SG can get a lot of different you know, tones, yeah. For sure. And this is a, a 59 Seymour Duncan and a Pearly Gates. And those pickups sound great together, like middle position on this guitar. Sweet spot, huh? Pretty great. Yeah. That's a beautiful hunk of wood for sure. Yeah. What, what year did you say that one is? Um, this is a 2005. Cool. Yeah. Have you had it since then? Um, I've had it since uh, probably yeah, 2007 or something. Yeah. But yeah, that's a yeah, that's beautiful. my main squeeze right there. <laughs> I still love owner. Um, and uh, this is a uh, 2015 custom shop. Les Paul VOS got the 60s neck on it. Rock and roll. Gibson was nice shady. enough to give this to me a few years ago. And uh, yeah, man, this guitar just kicks major ass. Um, I got Ox4 pickups in it. Uh, Mark Stowe at Ox4, he kind of did the uh, winding on these to be sort of like uh, Paige's number one. Sick. And uh, yeah, so kind of a little hat tip to, to the man Jimmy Page on this guitar. And we actually did the coil tap. So that taps the bridge pickup and um, and kind of get a little little out of phasey in the middle position. Oh, and uh, cool. yeah, this is fun. Like when Jason's playing a Les Paul and I'm playing a Les Paul, I can tap this. Change it up a little bit. Yeah, it gives sure. a, a wider uh, tone, tone range. Um, and uh, yeah, man, and it's not that heavy. Doesn't wow, doesn't, uh, it's yeah. remarkably light. Yeah, doesn't wow. kill you. Yeah, it almost feels like it, if it almost like it's chambered. Yeah, almost. Yeah. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, that's a great guitar. I like this. Um, Ooh, that yeah. badge is always nice. Yeah, to see. badge yeah. is cool. Yeah, rad. Awesome guitar. And this is a uh, Fender Strat, oh, American yeah. Standard Strat. It's a few years old. Um, this is obviously my Capo 2 guitar, and uh, we use Thalia Capos. Those are really great Capos. And, what do you uh, like about that Capo? Um, I just the tension is yeah. is really good on them, and like when I have to move it after a song, it doesn't change the tune. It really yeah. doesn't. That's great, man. Maybe just ever so slightly, but it's, we're a rock it's hard, and roll band. It, it's, it's hard okay. to find that. Yeah, it's okay. You know, <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, this got custom shop pickups in it. Um, I mainly live in the fourth position on this guitar, and I play uh, played this guitar on the Life You Chose, Traveling Alone, and uh, I have a big like slide moment um, in The Last of My Kind, where me and Amanda go back and forth. And uh, fourth position is like the out of phase. Yeah, spot, it's right? the it's like the Sweet Home Alabama. It's gotcha. Like, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's the uh, stratiest sound yeah. of all, like Sultans of Swing. Yeah, the Knopfler, you know, sound. That yeah. thing for sure. But yeah. I like that position with slide. So, huh. yeah. yeah, yeah, so that's, that's, a, that's a cool, cool, cool buddy Next right there. Yeah, so this this was new. I guess this is a few years old now, or at least, you know, I've had it for a few years. Um, I mean, just look at it. Oh, it's awesome. string Rick. It's yeah. a Rickenbacker. 
Um, and this is a, a 92 uh, reissue of the 63. Yeah, these uh, are so Fire cool. Glow, like, kind of like the George Harrison. Are you playing slide play. on this? I do play slide on this. And uh, yeah, we, you can see we put some foam in here because I uh, use a compressor when I play that slide part. So it keeps it from howling feedback. Um, yeah, you don't want to These pickups are awesome. They sound great. I've noticed uh, the, your, your, your bottom strings here are crossed over. Is there a reason for that in particular? Um, I guess with this, uh, you know, with this bridge plate or whatever back here, that's, that's um, I guess how you have to do that. Um, but uh, these strings are the compressed wound strings, which I got at uh, pickofthericks.com. Pickofthericks.com. Uh, yeah. That's some dorky stuff. Yeah, so, yeah it's, it's some Nerdville stuff. But, um, Did you have to change out the bridge or anything? New nut or anything? Um, yeah, I had to change the bridge out because, um, as you know, these are have some intonation issues. I've heard. But, um, but these strings are great. So if you have a, a Rick, or, or I would say even just a Dan Electro 12 string, the compressed wound strings are, are uh, really good. That's a fun little tip. So yeah, they take that kind of bright harshness out. Um, I always love their, their tiered pit guard on these, yeah. it's so cool. Yeah, and uh, you know, I thought I would only get, get one, but I, I want to get another one now. You know, when, you get, <laughs> when you get one, you want another one. So there's the Rick. Um, start into acoustic here, this is, uh, Martin HD28, and um, this belonged to Jason. Yeah, I think he had it the last time we spoke. Yeah, yep. and it's got the Fishman Aura system in it that sounds really great. Yeah. And uh, I love the herringbone. So pretty. I mean, it's just a beautiful guitar. Yeah, and they, man, they always sound so good. They all, yeah, yeah. It's you know, it's a, it's a Martin. It's been that same shape since like what 19. Yeah. Or yeah. Crazy like that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's, this is a, a great instrument. Yeah. So I like I like playing that. Um, all right, let's move over here. Oh. Here's a new friend. Is that a Townsend? This is a, yeah, this is a uh, Pete Townsend Signature SG Special. Rule. Um, it's got Grover tuners on it, which I think kind of help keep it in tune. And yeah, those seem to hunker in real good. Yeah, maybe even help to sustain some. Um, I've been playing this one on Cover Me Up, and uh, sometimes a song called Go It Alone. And uh, the pickups are great. They're a little hotter P90s, but I like the sound of them. And uh, I found this on Reverb, and the guy was in, uh, the guy was selling it was in Murfreesboro, which is like 30 minutes away from Nashville. And so I drove out there, he met me at a Burger King, and uh, you know, played it, liked it, got a value mill, got out of there. That's a good story. Yeah. <laughs> awesome guitar. Yeah, that's awesome. This, this is an old friend. I love yeah. this guitar. I think this is so slick that Duesenberg trim on a 335 yeah. is just so. It's eye catching. Yeah. You know what I mean? You see it and you're like, oh wow, that's different. Yeah, and I bought this off Jason um, probably six years ago, and he put the Duesenberg tremolo on there, and um, I just got a Tone Pros bridge with the rolling saddles, so yep. that kind of keeps keeps the bridge Helps from rocking lot, back and yeah. forth, and um, yeah, it stays in tune and. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so, I loved that the last time we talked. I, thought, I yeah. thought that was just the coolest. And I put Ox 4s in it, I think, since the last time. And uh, those pickups sound great. And uh, yeah, this is a 07 block reissue. Way cool. Awesome guitar. Way cool. Yeah. And then, uh, I guess, what is this, last but not least right here? Yeah, this is the um, oh, newest edition. That's of a few weeks ago. Mm. Gibson sent this over. This is a brand new J200. And it's got the LR Bags Anthem. Yeah, I've heard great and, things um, about that. Uh, yeah, system. it sounds it sounds pretty cool. I'm somewhere in the middle, like it's got the mic and the pickup. You can blend the two, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I use that with a uh, Fishman uh, DI. And, yeah, uh, it's hard to get an acoustic guitar, guitar to sound like an acoustic guitar live. So sometimes you the piezo is a little weird. So I love that they give you the option. You yeah, know? I think a lot of people are kind of doing that now, but yeah. Yeah, and uh, I mean they're just they're only going to sound in my mind only going to sound so good with, without literally having a mic in right, right right you know um, but it's come a long way it's like you know frozen pizza I mean it's just like <laughs> it's really good yeah. now um, it's so, not delivery man it's <laughs> yeah um, so uh, yeah what and songs just, are you playing this on so I'm playing this on if we were vampires um, playing this on a, a new version of tour of duty that we've been oh, doing cool. more of a bluegrass thing and. Uh, you know, it sounds really good against Jason when he's playing a Martin. Makes sense. Yep. Yeah. And uh, of course, big Petty fan, you know, he yeah, played he these. Played one, Townsend yeah. played these. Noel Gallagher played J200. So, yeah, I've just always wanted yeah. one. I love so, them, man. I, yeah. I love how big they sound. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful guitar. It sounds great. 
fun Man. to play. So. so got some fun new stuff. Yeah, you got I think a lot so. of, You got a lot of colors in your palette to paint with, my dude. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> got some P90s, we got some single coils, we got buckers. And I feel like everything range. I have serves, uh, yeah, yeah, it serves a different purpose than the other guitar. Like, so I try to apply them, um, you know, I, as needed. I love needed. that attention to yeah. detail. If yeah. you had to play this entire set with one of these guitars, <laughs> SG. The SG, just because it's on. Yeah. yeah, I get that. I get yeah. that. Yeah. Well, and I can get some telly ish tones out of it in the middle position. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I can pull pull a show off with that guitar. If you had to, yeah. And slide the whole, yeah. Well, so, I hope you never have to. Yeah, but, that's, that's yeah, but knowing. Interesting aside. Yeah, yeah. yeah cool. Knowing that, um, yeah, so. Well, all right. I think you've changed a little bit in the amp department mm -hmm. and in the pedal department. So let's yeah. go take a look at that. Let's take a look. All yeah. right, cool. All right, Sadler, um, the last time, this isn't too different than the Not last too time different, no. we had a setup, but you you were running a, one of those hand-wired AC30s before, right? I was, right? yeah. What's this guy? So this is a 1965 Vox Pacemaker. It's pacemaker. all tube version. Uh, they made some solid state versions. Um, and uh, I got this uh, at Emerald City Guitars in Seattle. Uh, what's up, Trevor? Um, <laughs> And uh, me and Jason went in there. We always go in there when we're in Seattle. Sure. And uh, we plugged into this thing, and he was standing behind me going, man, I think it sounds great. If you don't buy it, I'm going to. And I was like, <laughs> I guess I'm going to buy it. Um, i put you on the spot. Yeah, he put me right on the spot. But I, I'm very appreciative that he did because I love this amp. It just, I run it at like volume four. Above that, it uh, doesn't really get louder. It just kind of gets more saturated, but it just does like the, you know, like jangle rock thing. Like you just a telly and a D chord, just like dang. Johnny Marr kind of like super it just, jangly. Yeah, it just, it just sounds great. It's Man. just a great amp. Um, and then the third power you had the last time, which sounds awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, it's like my SG. It's just like I, I really relate it to it being kind of my sound. You're used um, to it, yeah. Very used to it. Uh, Delano Nova, third power. Um, I've had this for six years. Um, you know, it's, it's a, a 59 AC Vox on, on the first channel and a 68 Plexi on this channel. And we put a stage bug uh, in between uh, the uh, Marshall channel um, to correct phase. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because sometimes it, you know, just depends. Like sometimes it's out of phase, but. Um, yeah, man. Third power really does that um, uh, blendable two amp and one amp yeah. thing so well. Yeah. Dual, dual citizen is amazing. I don't know if you've heard of the kitchen sink yet. I have. Man, yeah. so rad. Amazing amps. It's got a, a Celestian Gold speaker in it. Um, Do you know what's in this old box? Um, what is in there? Let me see. Is it open? Yeah. Uh, what do we got? It's a Weber. It's oh, a cool. Weber, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I literally bought that thing and put it in my rig like the same day. Immediately, huh? Yeah, yeah. What'd just, you do with the old hand wired AC30? You at home or uh, something? Oh, it's a backup. Cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. And uh, they're both on all the time. Yeah, and you're show. running some effects in stereo, right? Yep. Like, uh, they got like a reverb and uh, some of my modulation effects are in stereo. And uh, you got some good amps to do it with, man. Yeah, and then like when I'm when I want just a little more gain or something, I, I, I mainly stay on the Vox channel here, depending on the song. And then when I want a little more gain, I just like kick over the Marshall, you totally. know. Um, and then uh, up from there, I'll do a clean boost or a drive, drive or something, or something yeah. like that. Cool. Yeah. Speaking so, of boosts and drives, uh, let's go take yeah, a look. Yeah, let's have a look. Yeah. Cool. All right, Sadler, what, what's this? What's this all about, huh? This is my uh, this is my pedal board. So um, let's just move on down the line here. And <laughs> I love that you got your own Ryman Auditorium now. pedal board here. Uh, now let's have a look in here. Just, um, this is a Ryman uh, laundry bag here. Is that what that is? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I've got a few new things since the you last do. time. Um, kind of made my setup a little easier. Got a bigger board. Uh, Michael Bethencourt, uh, Jason's Tech, and kind of our our stage manager built this great junction box. Super clean. Oh, wow, cool. Up top, and he wired and put this whole thing together. Um, and this is a pedal train. I forget what size it is, but uh, it's a pedal train board. And um, we'll just go down the chain. All right. Um, I just added that Eventide H9 Max. Those are so fun. They're really fun. Yeah, it's I so fun. I know like a lot of people have them now. You kind of see them everywhere, but you can I really like the, tweak it. Yeah, yeah, I like you can kind of personalize and sculpt your own effects. Right, and, right. And uh, that way you can kind of get out from 
from you know using a preset that everybody else has. Totally. You can start there and then sculpt your own thing. And um, it's really just a nice like added like, oh, you know, like we've been doing a different cover every night. So depending on that, I you know, oh, I don't really have like a gated reverb crazy thing now or you something. Do. <laughs> Just throw it in there, you know, put it in line, a preset, and uh, so it's just there as like a Swiss Army knife. Totally. Just kind of one more thing if I needed it. Um, but, I, but I don't live on it, so. So are you, are you dialing in your tone and then saving it as a preset? Yes. Kind of toggling yeah. between. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so those are cool, man. I, I really think Eventide is one of the better effects. Like yeah, especially as for far digital as, stuff they're making. Yeah, like as far as time-based. And uh, like modulation and stuff. Yeah, you can send a MIDI signal to it. And yeah, it all. it's it's That's pretty so cool. great. Um, and then we got just a normal old Dunlop volume pedal there. Um, and I do just some swells and stuff here and sure. there with that, or or just a kill switch. You know, let's get out. I don't know yeah. the next chord. Um, and then uh, this is a uh, Clyde McCoy uh, Crybaby. Wow. And. Uh, you gotta have a wah wah. Got to. Right? Yeah. So, um, and then let's see, I've got the, the standard Blue Line 6 MM4. You've, you've had that sucker a long time. I've had time, it, man. man. I you know don't what? People to... laugh, but those things cover so much ground. They really if, do. if it's good enough for Mike Campbell or somebody, it's good enough <laughs> for me, man. You know, it's all good. I just like that I don't have to scroll between anything. Right. Like, I'm not. You're not banking up or down. It's That's just it's not doing. my style, man. I gotta just be able to go. Okay, tremolo, boom. Right. You know, and then. Um, Plus, you probably had it so long, you know exactly what you're hitting. Yeah, and I, re I haven't really changed much, much stuff in there. I've got like a slow Leslie, fast Leslie, tremolo, and then uh, kind of a faster pitch vibrato going on there. And um, and then uh, let's look at my drives here. I've got King of Tone. So I got the first channel, the yellow side is like a clean boost. So I got the uh, red side is more of like a, a I guess like a tube screamer or something gotcha, like that. Gotcha. You know, does the king of tone thing. Um, got the Greer Amps light speed. Which what is, up, Nick? Yeah. Nick, Nicky makes some awesome stuff, man. I think that's one of the best pedals like ever, in my opinion. Like, and I see them on a lot of boards now. Mm, yeah. Um, in terms of like versatility, man, if you got a backline amp or just whatever, like, Throw a light speed on there, and you can just dial like a, a baseline tone, and, and get what get you, you need out of for it. Sure. Yeah, and I've got that like the loudness and drive cranked up pretty good, and the frequency dialed back, so it's more of like a creamy drive setting. Very versatile pedal. Um, got a forest green compressor, that. Uh, Matt is, Professor. Yeah, yeah. Matt Professor. Um, I love that compressor. Um, I don't see too many of them out there, but um, on people's boards, but. I love that compressor. It just it does what I want it to do. Totally. Um, I have it like on the sustain setting, so I, I've got just like a nice even smack. It's not like killing it, right? But, but just, is um, it, yeah, I'm not a, any kind of slide player, but is compression something that is essential for slide? I think uh, it feels to me like it would almost be to even even you out. Yeah, I think it, it, it evens it out. I think for me and Jason, like, um, if you don't have compression, you got to have volume. Ah, uh, I see what you you're know saying. What I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think just putting a compressor in line on slide just kind of makes it so you can keep your amps lower on stage. Um, analog, dual, uh, analog man, dual analog delay. Love it, because I got a slap and a long one. Um, I mean, it just sounds great. Mike at Analog Man, he's the best. Um, and then uh, I've got this Blue Sky Strymon that so I, I kind of have, because I don't have reverb on my amps. Right. So I kind of have just, um, uh, a, just spring verb, just like a light Standard, spring yeah. verb, like as if it's in the amp. Um, and then I have like a long, more like hall verb setting Dreamy there. Kind of stuff. Yeah. And then um, this is my third power channel switcher. Oh. Uh, this is a uh, Walrus, um, I think it's the Transit 5, I think that's what it's called. Um, it's just made my life easier. Right. So you're you not. Know? Yeah. Yeah, tap just, and all yeah that. exactly. And I've got, these are just all my drives and my compression. Oh, that's so, cool. Yeah, just, just in there. Um, and then I just added this uh, Walrus 385 that I have just kind of, kind of just cranked up to get like the Give it hell. kind of fuzzy, grainy sound, like maybe like kind of Mark Ford ish or something okay, like gotcha, that. Yeah. yeah, and I've been, I just added that in this week and that's been pretty fun to mess with. Um, and then cork tuner. I like the pitch black tuner. I think they're pretty accurate. I think, yeah, and, and you can see them. 
You can see them. Yeah, em. I love that about yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. I've, yeah. I've had a couple of those myself. And then for your acoustic setup, you're just running this uh, Fishman Aura. Yeah, is that what that this is? is a uh, this is a Fishman Platinum uh, DI ah. and EQ, and uh, and then I've got a uh, Shure wireless system just for the acoustic, so I don't have to deal with the electric cable mm -hmm. and then deal with an acoustic cable. I can just put the cable on my stand, grab the acoustic. That's handy for sure. And I can roam around and go out in the crowd if I want. Are you doing uh, that? You going no, out on I'm the not, catwalk? No. You go to Garth Brooks? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so well, yeah, that's my pedal world, man. That's, man, that's, that's a whole, very yeah. clean setup. Michael did a great yeah. job on that. Yeah, he did. Yeah, it's wired well. And then what do you got powering it all before I let you go? Um, Michael, what do we got power? Walrus power. Cool. Yeah. Well, right on. Sadler, it's a pleasure to talk yeah, to you again, man, my dude. Yeah, thanks, Perry. Yeah, we're going to grab Jimbo yeah. and talk to him. Yeah. Cool. All right, guys, last but not least, we got Jimbo here, the man that actually puts the unit in the 400 unit. This yeah. dude's a bad, bad MFer, but right out of the gate, this is totally different. What's this situation? Yeah, so this is a Sadowski Will Lee model. Um, it has a lot of nice upgrades to it. It has a, a flame maple fretboard and these wild black abalone inlays and a hip shot detuner. That's nice. That's a, a whole step detuner. But um, uh, Jason Newstead, of Metall formerly of the rock and roll band Metallica, gave me this bass guitar. I gotta ask you how you met Jason Newstead of all well, people. He came to our show, we played at the, at the Grand Ole Opry um, for New Year's a couple years ago, and he came and hung out and we, we made friends. And um, over the next couple of years, he came to a few shows, and one night in California, he was there, and um, he was—he just told me that you know that is here. Take this. That is a trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I've taken it, and uh, it's become my main bass because it has so many tonal possibilities. Yeah, and it plays so well, and and it just—it's so light. It's pretty looking. It's a beautiful bass. Yeah. Right, so run me through these controls. Uh, okay. It has a it, it has a volume control and a uh, pickup pan control like a standard passive gotcha. bass and then he has uh, Roger's vintage tone control right. which is like a, um, a regular passive tone control it acts just like a regular tone control and then there's uh, the bass and treble EQ oh that's so handy to have it right at your fingertips I believe they're boost only too so I just use them mostly all the way down and then sometimes like if I lean toward the bridge pickup a little bit I'll add some bass and um, but that's about it. I don't really run the preamp very hot at What's all. What's your little toggle do? The toggle there is a nice little mid boost. Oh, cool! And I believe it's dialed in at 1K, and um, it really gives it a lot of teeth. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it and it gets louder, and it, I mean, it's it's awesome. That's I so use cool. it for the uh, for the sort of celloy parts on vampires. Ah, uh, cool. Yeah. yeah. Man, I, I love what Roger's doing. He makes some really great basses, but yeah. uh, Jason Newstead would be the last person I expected you to like, yeah, <laughs> know me too. and be friends with. I That's mean, so cool. I, when I met him, it was, it was so crazy. I mean, and, and still, every time we talk, my inner 12-year-old wants to smash the coffee table. Totally, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I, I just, it's so rock and roll, and he's still completely just rock and fucking roll, man. You ever you know? be talking to Jason and be like, oh, hold on, hold on, New Stan's calling. <laughs> Walk off and take the call. Oh, well, you know. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. It's happened, I think, a couple times. That rules, man. Well, that's yeah, cool that you can learn guy. something from a totally different kind of player than yourself. Yeah, yeah, and he's got a band now called The Chop House, and they're they're really sweet, swell fellows, and they're a good band. And um, <laughs> rules. Yeah, they're awesome folks, man. Are you still playing with wooden picks? Well, I still have them. But now I, I keep them in my studio or I'll take them to sessions because um, I just like them a whole lot and I didn't want to lose them. I get that, totally. But the folks at Dunlop hooked us up with Jimbo picks. I don't know if you guys nice. can see that, but it says Jimbo on it. Just do it. And, uh, yeah, so, <laughs> so I, I use those now. For sure. So are you on this bass pretty much all night? Pretty much all night. And the other's just a backup in case It's something. a backup and um, for a while I was kind of switching back and forth. It's another Sadowski. It's a late PJ classic kinda, blue yeah. vintage PJ. It looks like the similar preamp kind of thing though. Yeah, it's the same preamp except without the without mid boost. The, that's cool. And um, it's amazing. It also has so many tonal yeah. options going on. And I've also found that when I take that one to the studio, it always works really well. Sits in real well. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So it, it records like a dream. 
Are you going between picks and your fingers? Yeah. Yeah, okay, I figured that yeah, would probably be the case. It, it, it's a bit all over the place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I love that. You can get so many different you yeah. know, sounds. Yeah. And I think the last time we talked, weren't you running flat wounds? Yeah, on the P bases. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. And I still have the, the old fenders and sure. the flats on them and everything. Yeah. And nice and thuddy. Not to say a whole lot more about Roger, but he also makes a hell of a set of flat wounds that are. That are really oh, Sadowski good. strings, huh? Yeah, and cool, I put, cool. put them on all my fenders, and they, they really, really rule. That's awesome. They feel man. nice and sound nice and have a nice tension to them and brightness. And yeah, I'm always stoked on, to see what he's got at NAM because yeah. he makes some really cool stuff. Yeah, he's really good, man, and, and a really sweet fella, too. Well, so this part of the equation has changed a whole lot, but mm -hmm. you're still running the ash downs. Yeah, I'm still mm -hmm. using the ash downs. They're still working. Um, they have, they don't break, which has right. been good. You know, um, they, I've never had a problem out of any of them. They, they sound great. They, they take pedals pretty well. They're not too hypey in the low end, so it doesn't cloud up the stage too much. Right, right. But it still sounds kind like Kind of find bass. your sonic space, yeah. Yeah. Now, are you, you're not running both of these. Wait, it's a 100 and a 300. Are you yeah, running them? Yeah, I have them? a 100 and a 300, and I mostly just use the 300, and occasionally I'll switch to the 100 for a, a brighter sound, or if I'm just feeling the need to have a different tone that day, I'll go there if the instead. the room sounds kind of different or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah, get that. It's good to have a different option sometimes. Yep. But um, we this got is this Howard is, the Duck here. Yeah, I still is that have Howard. <laughs> um, uh, Howard was one of my favorite movies when I was. Mine a kid. too. I watched it like ten million times. Yeah. My mom actually uh, threw the tape away and told me that it broke. Oh. She just she was so sick of watching it. That's so <laughs> it was mean. like my favorite movie when I was a kid. <laughs> oh, that and man. the Goonies. Yeah, well, my mom wouldn't let me rent the thing more than once or twice. Oh yeah, anyway, I get it. You know, so. so funny. It's it's kind of crazy how dark that movie was. It was very dark, but yeah. It, but in a sort of comic. Kind Dude of. gets possessed by a demon yeah. and all this. It's and like, like a kids movie. Sci-fi going on, <laughs> yeah. and all kind of crazy business. Oh man. But um, yeah. And then what I really love most about my rig is this shelf here, that our our tech Michael Bethencourt, Mr. Back and Forth has Mr. Hooked it Back up. and Forth built this for me, and there's a radial head bone switcher for the two heads. For the heads, sure. And then. Um, Basically, from the pedal board, it comes into here to this exotic X blender, and um, I'm guessing that's a fuzz, like a tone blender kind of thing. It's a, it's a, like a parallel loop. Oh, it's oh, like okay. It's like a wet dry loop, yeah. and and on this thing, I have the uh, Effectrode PC2A compressor uh, to sort of get that optical compression, mm -hmm. the big, poofy, breathy, puffy kind of thing. But I don't run it very hard. Um, I just blend in about. Well, this thing's at about 10 o'clock right now. Gotcha. And then from there, it all winds up going to my lovely old Noble DI here. Yeah, these are This one's number 19. Wow. Yeah. No kidding? Yeah. I love yeah, that. Yeah, I love it. It's Ooh. so good. You'd man. almost have to have this in a rack because these 12 AX7s are exposed and yeah, stuff. Yeah, they're and you sticking wanna... out the back a little bit. Yeah, you want but to. But even when, even when it wasn't on a shelf, oddly, I never, never had, had any, any problem. I mean, I baby it. Of course, of course. You know, I mean, it's it's hand wired point to point. Right. Jack, you know, he's a lovely Basically fella. like studio outboard gear, right? I mean, yeah, that's totally. Pretty, that's a real deal. When I come home and I go to the studio, I always go to our shop and take this thing off the shelf and go home and work. Right, and yeah. when I come back, I'll put it back on the shelf and go back out on the road. This is a unique feature. I don't know if you can see it on camera. I'll try to get a really good picture for you. But um, these little plates, so you yeah. can twist in, you get it set perfect, yeah, and then lock from, it in. These are from Tapestry Audio, the folks that make the Bloom, the oh, volume cool. pedal. Uh, they're like little uh, knob locks. It's handy. I don't know if they still make them, but they did a few years ago, and I bought a whole bunch of them. Yeah, that's real, real handy. And I figured it's, it's really neat because you can tighten the set screw down to lock it, or you can let it go, or you can get them sort of medium tight, and it turns it into a, like a detented pot, ah. so you can click it. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I know so you can mean. you got a whole notch. choice like a notch range pot. of motion. It kind of changes the whole pot setup. Cool. But yeah, that's that's sort of the brains of the operation there. The noble. Is and then the last thing over here before you get into your get into your pedal board is this cab. Yeah, it's a it's an Ashdown six ten. Six ten. Um, I believe it's from their custom shop. They uh, they put this red grill cloth on it for me. Yeah. I thought that was pretty rad. I think a 610 is a good sounding it is. compromise. It's not gonna kill you. Yeah, and being kind of a, a vertically challenged fellow, <laughs> such as myself, 
when the when you stand in front of an 810, those right top two tens hit yeah. you right in the back of the head. Yeah. And then the ones below that are like right here at the back of your shoulders. So like it, you can't even turn it on without deafening yourself. And also, I find that the low end is bigger with a 610 cabinet. Really. Than than an 810, or at least what I can hear in the oh, little world. I wonder if it's the shape of the cabinet. Maybe so, yeah. maybe it's the dimension of it. I was gonna say, because the these are a lot smaller. deeper than a SVT. Yeah, they are a little bit deeper. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I love it, man. I love the Ashdown stuff, it's good. Cool, well, I'm stoked for you that you, uh, A, are friends with Jason Newstead and also yeah. found a new bass that you love, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, it's amazing, man, I'm definitely blessed. All right, before we get out of here, because um, I know y'all gotta sound check and all that, let's uh, go take a look at your board. All right, all right, right cool. on. All right, Jimbo, here we are in your pedal world, mm -hmm. which is, I, I always like your pedal board because you got a lot more pedals than most bass players Yeah, I do. have way too many buttons. Yeah, John like Prine told me one time that I have too many buttons. Well, if John Prine says it, yeah. <laughs> but I still, I'm, I'm just ignorant like that, so I just keep plowing ahead with all these buttons. I get it. But uh, yeah, I've got a lot going on. And um, the first up, just like Saddler's board over there, um, Michael Bethencourt made, a, made me a junction box here. Love that that um, has uh, all sorts of things going on. It has like an emergency, in, in case of emergency, break glass output. No shit that's switch, just yeah, like yeah. straight out of the board. Turn the buffer on and off, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, you can turn the buffer on and off. Um, it's really great, that sort of uh, tidied everything up a lot. And, um, but so I guess first off, um, I've, I've got this Peterson here that's coming, coming off the volume pedal but actually the volume pedal is last in the chain. Ah. Because, well, there's just all sorts of reasons. Um, but most importantly, when I go to the, to the EBS, it, it doesn't like to see a fading input. Ah. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? So um, the, the, synth, the oscillators won't grab onto it. Won't track properly. So I need to fade in a big octave note. I can't really, it won't track it until ah. it's full volume. Interesting so, workaround. Yeah. So I have wound up having to put the volume pedal at the end of the chain. But um, anyway, so I guess first up would be uh, this, um, well, I'll use this transit here from Walrus. Walrus, yeah, that's, that's such a clean board. Yeah. Michael did this, the whole board too, yeah, right? Yeah, Michael built this board and like everything he does, it's very clean. Board. Yeah. Very, very good. It's very super well clean business right made, there, yeah. Made all the cables and everything. But um, I guess the chain, uh, well, I guess I should mention that the board is also a pedal train. Cool. I believe it's a, it's a classic, or a PT1 from the classic line. And um, so first up would be the Soma preamp from Greer Amps. Um, Nick sent me that and told me that I would love it, and he was right. And he was right. Nick's usually yeah. right about everything I've ever asked He him. is, yeah. he is. And, um, <laughs> that dude is a wealth of knowledge. Yeah, it, I'm not exactly sure what it's supposed to do, but I know that when I set it for myself, I can back off on the volume a bit, and it almost gives it that sound like, like your amp is too loud and the speaker's like wanting to bust. Wah, 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 it kind of yeah. has that grunt <laughs> yeah, kind yeah. of thing. And so I use that for that sort of thing. And oddly enough, that tone seems to blend really well with um, our more acoustic heavy numbers. Oh, really? Which you would think you would need a bigger, cleaner, like round, rounder yeah. bottom end, but that sort of amp, small amp dying sound actually sounds pretty good. Yeah. In, in the context, so I use it for that kind of stuff, and then uh, from there I go into the uh, this Walrus Voyager, which is a super fun pedal. It is a super fun pedal. I love the sort of little bit of compression that it does, mm. and and it, it, it I don't know. It just does this thing. It just makes it a little bigger and meaner. Thickens you up a little bit. Yeah, a little more in the top end, but. It doesn't really affect the bottom in a negative kind of way at all, so that that really rocks. And then I have the uh, the Ampeg Classic Pre, and I put that on there because I used to use Ampeg amps, and I got so used to the ultra low switch. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of our older material was recorded with an Ampeg with the ultra low, or toured with an Ampeg with. So the that ultra basically low. gives you that. Ability. Yeah, sure. and that's pretty much what I use that for. And I, surprisingly, it stays on. Is a it lot. on all the time? Pedal. It's kind? on about seventy percent of the oh, wow. night. Oh wow! Yeah, and um, 
So that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And then from there we go to the Walrus Janus <laughs> that um, Michael Bethencourt again has modified for me so that it can be um, changed from a horizontal orientation to a vertical. So it can fit it on there. Yeah. That's and, cool. And one, he had to get in there and change the polarity on the joystick so that it would have um, the axis, the same X, Y axis as if I were, as if it were still Still horizontal. the other way, sure. Yeah. Now, you've had this on your board a long time. I can't I believe have. you haven't kicked off one of those little knobs yet. They don't come off. They're pretty they're sturdy, huh? That's one of the sturdiest pedals on my board. I've never had a problem with them. Man, that's a trip. I, I mean, it's, uh, yeah. When I first saw it, I was like, oh, I can break the hell yeah, out of that. Yeah, this thing's done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, three days on the road, and that's toast. But no, years later, I'm still, I'm still standing on it That's when I trip. use it. And how, how much uh, are you changing those little knobs? Um, well, I don't really change the, the knobs so much, but like some songs, I'll put it on the Vox sounding side where it's a little more subtle uh -huh. and kind of get it in tempo and it just sort of undulates a yeah. little bit with the band. Like gives it a heartbeat kind of. Yeah. yeah, and then sometimes I'll put it up here where it's going really fast on that subtle side so it's kind of almost a Leslie effect. Right, right. And then sometimes when it needs to be heard, it goes back to the other side, and and then that's when it gets pretty noticeable. Yeah. Well, you've been using it long bump, 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 enough that you've kind of got it dialed into exactly what you need. Yeah. Yeah. It took a minute. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> I bet that's a very odd pedal to be on a bass player. It for. is. It is. <laughs> yeah. And and even uh, there's something weirder on here. I'll get into in a second. But after the after I don't well just so you know I don't use the fuzz side of this right, right. at all because. It's as awesome as it is, it's it's completely unpredictable. So if you don't know where the joystick is on the fuzz side, you go to kick it on. For a bass player in our situation, you need a consistent kind of fuzz. I need to know again. what's going to happen. Yeah. So I just don't even bother with it. But I do love the tremolo, and I've been after them for a while to just cut that thing in just half. Just do it. Yeah, totally. I mean, fit it on your board. If you guys are listening, Colt, you need to <laughs> cut this thing in half. You'll sell twice as many of them. Anyway. So from there, we go to the EBS Octobase, and that one is the Studio Edition. And I think the only difference is maybe the, the switch is clickless. Oh, okay. and silent switching. And I think it might have like a few dB more of gain ah. overall output. But other than that, it's pretty much the exact same. Yeah, those Swedish guys make some EBS. really cool stuff, man. Yeah, they're really cool folks, man. I've, I've talked to them on occasion, and they've always been really nice to me, so I'm, I'm really happy with it. And that's the second one of those I've had. And I, and I got you, that one because I wanted to take my other one home. So I could have, have it one at home. home in the studio. Are you know? using that for a higher octave or like? No, it's a lower octave. It is? Yeah, and eventually I would like to maybe get another one Ooh. and have it set to where it's a little more subtle, kind of on the drier side, just mm. barely there to make just to it feel a real f just make it rumble yeah, yeah. a little more. But this one's set to the your typical like big synthy. Gotcha. Boom, boom, boom. That's cool. Um, yeah. And then I think the last pedal is that is that a Maleko? It is. It's a Maleko Spring Reverb. Oh, just a little verb. Yeah. Yeah, that's something every bass player has on their board. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't know I mean, any bass players. Why leave home without verb. your verb if you play the bass? You crack me up, man. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I I use it for one song, actually two songs. Um, most noticeably, I use it on if we were vampires right. for the cello sounding part, and that involves again the mid boost that's sure. on the Sadowski bass and uh, the this Dunlop volume pedal here. Uh, a lot Coming of, and out uh, of it, like yeah, a, swelling in mm -hmm. and out of it, and 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 it, it that thing really, really brings something out of that 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 mid boost. And I don't, I, I you know, I was just looking for a small reverb pedal that would fit on my board, so yeah. I could, for that one song. But since I've started using that one, I love how simple it is and it, and it really sounds great. Yeah, those sound good and they don't take up a ton of room, which I love. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and it's pink. Gotta love that. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I dig it. I mean, it's such a, uh, man, you, you, honestly, Michael Bethencourt is worth his weight in gold. Yeah, you like, right. That's a great setup. Yeah. It's super clean. It's clean. It's and if something goes wrong, we know what's up with it. Totally. You know, yeah. um, so it's good to have the man in the house who built yeah, it. Not only that, he's know. building you bypasses or whatever you need to suit the situation. Sure. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, he's he's really our uh, our secret weapon yeah. in a lot of ways. 
He's great. Michael, if you're watching this, we love you. Good on you, man. Love love you. Love <laughs> well, Jimbo, thank you so much for sure. taking the time you're to welcome. talk to us. Yeah. Love doing this Anytime. again. Next yeah. time your gear changes at all, please give us a call. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Uh, I'm so excited for the show tonight. Things things are always changing, you know. I believe that for sure that yeah. you know, it should always keep I feel like real things. gearheads are always tweaking. You're always looking for Yeah. It. Corey yeah. Brandon, his board changes every single day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, damn, dude, yeah. just le let it alone for a minute. <laughs> and then there's those guys that don't even use boards at, at all. all. They yeah. just have a bag of pedals and they throw them on the floor and yeah. plug them up and there you go, you know, and that works yeah. for whatever, you know. But totally. Yeah. I guess tone, just like art, is relative. Yeah. So what works for you works for you. For yeah. sure, man. I feel, again, I'm blessed, man. Yeah, I'm so it's like you got a great gig. <laughs> love and life. Yeah. Man. <laughs> well, hell yeah. Thanks so much. Thank again. you. Thank you guys for letting me talk to you. Absolutely. To me, absolutely. I'm, I'm flattered. We, we don't it. get to talk to a lot of bass players with wacky pedal setups, so it works for us. <laughs> cool. Guys, awesome. thanks so much for watching. Cheers. Uh, stay tuned for other rig rundowns, riff rundowns, video lessons, all that fun stuff. You're already online. Click subscribe. Might as well do it. You hey can guys. also subscribe to the magazine and have it sent right to your house. See you later. Cool. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs>